What the flip is poppin' tube nation? It is voice over Sarah right now. This is part two of my Coachella two-part series. If you didn't watch the first one, go watch it or else this isn't gonna make any sense to you and you're just gonna be sitting there so confused. Just scroll down, click the link in my description to watch part one, but if you already watched part one, let me, let me catch you up on what happened last time. Okay, so this is a, <laughs> it's a blow up couch. So we were praying to God that we were parked next to some Australian hotties, just any hotties. Give me any hottie next to me. Like we're literally blowing up a couch right now. Oh, oh my fucking God, <laughs> bruh. <laughs> Oh my god. Christelle got so mad at me. She didn't get like, yeah, she did get mad at me. I get a text. Okay. <laughs> I get a text from my ex. What's gonna happen? What is he gonna say? The drama, we love it. I'm sorry that I had to keep you guys hanging. If I didn't split this video in half, it would have been two hours long. It would have been a feature film. I gotta give myself a break with editing. You guys know how it is. I know you guys wanna see what happens next, so we're just gonna get right on into it. But before we do that, we do have a sponsor. So take it away, Sarah, in five seconds. Whoa, Hollywood is crazy. All right, all right, all right. Today's video is sponsored by Mud Water. What, what is Mud Water? It's not what you think. Well, maybe. Mud Water is a coffee alternative with four aptogenic mushrooms and Ayurvedic herbs. Sounds fancy, sounds complicated, but it's really not. It's basically just a drinkable ritual for your mind, body, and your soul. It's as versatile as your morning cup of coffee, but without the anxiety, the jitters, and the midday crash. Mud Water can be made in a variety of different ways. Make it into a latte, or just add a tablespoon of it into some hot water, and you're good to go. Whatever your preference Preferences. And with one seventh of the caffeine that a cup of coffee has, you get energy and you can drink mud all day without it affecting your sleep. And Mud Water kindly sent me their starter kit, which includes a 30 serving tin of mud, a USB rechargeable frother, gives you the little cord too to charge it, power button. Woo! Yeah comes with three of these bad boys, and a free sample of their vegan coconut creamer. It's delicious. Mud includes ingredients such as cacao, chai, lion's mane, chaga, and cordyceps, which offer a huge range of benefits, including improving your mood, your physical performance, and your immune system. It's 100% USDA certified organic and GMO free. And for my gluten-free girlies, what's up? I'm included in that. It is gluten-free and it's plant-based, along with it being Whole30 and kosher. Here is me waking up at the crack of dawn to start my morning, and I've got my hot water right here and my mud water right here. Look at that. And then I take a tablespoon of it, see that? And then I just put it in there, you know, very simple. And then I take my frother and then I just stick it in there and then I just watch it do its thing. And it is so satisfying, honestly. I find myself just doing this for a few minutes because it's just so aesthetically pleasing to watch. And then I drink it and it tastes so good, y'all. It has a very earthy taste to it. It's not too intense, so I usually just drink it straight. I like the way it tastes straight, but there's so many ways that you can make this drink. Like if you go on their website, they have like a full list of different recipes that you can use. And I really like that it's low caffeine. It doesn't make me feel jittery. It doesn't make me feel anxious or shaky. It's just the perfect amount of energy to get me through the day. Try Mud Water today and get 15% off of their starter kit just by scrolling down and clicking the link in my description and using code BASCA. You'll remember that. Code BASCA, click that link. Let's get caffeinated. Thank you Mud Water for sponsoring today's video and let's get into it. Oh my God, <laughs> so crazy. Let's get on into it people. I get a text from my ex. We talk sometimes here and there, but we're not like in each other's lives really. Like we're cool with each other. I just was not expecting him to be at Coachella, dude. Like, 
that he would like kind of make fun of it. You know what I'm saying? And so he texted me, yo, are you at Coachella? And y'all, receiving that text while I am in the JID crowd, and I know he's in that crowd also, I'm in a Jungkook t-shirt, no makeup, hair in a messy bun. Am I really gonna run into my ex like this right now? Like he's seen worse, we dated for three years, but it's like, am I really reuniting with my ex like right now? I wasn't like, fuck, but I was just like, oh. Why is he here? And I responded and I was like, yeah, are you here, question mark? And he was like, yeah, oh my God, are you camping? And I was like, yeah, are you? And he was like, yeah. So I'm like, oh my God, we've just been coexisting at the same campgrounds and we just haven't run into each other yet, but we're both here. I was like, are you at JID as I'm in the crowd and trying to enjoy it? Like, and I was enjoying it, but I was so, thrown off by that text. He was like, no, me and my friends are about to like walk up to the set right now. And I was like, oh my God, he's like walking up to this set right now. What the fuck am I gonna do, man? And then I kind of lost service. My texts weren't going through to him anymore. So I was like, okay, I'm just gonna let this ride. If he sees me, he sees me. Then I just finished watching JID, such a great set. He brought out Earth Gang. It was so iconic. And then after the set was over, kind of looking around for him for a second, but also I was kind of like trying to avoid seeing him right now because I'm like, I don't want to see you right now. We're friends, but it's just like still like, what the fuck? And I was sober too. Not saying that like I had to be drunk to see him, but it's just like, Hey, have you been? I was like, damn, I could have had like two shots at least. Anyway, I didn't end up seeing him while I was walking back. So I was like, okay. But I know I have to see him at some point because I do want to see him at some point. So I go back to the campsite and I start doing my makeup and actually getting ready for the night. Oh, I'm so happy I saw Masego and it was so fun. Masego played my favorite songs. Silver Tongue Devil. She got me cocky, man. Oh my god, and he played Mystery Lady. Emma! I freaked the fuck out. And my finger is bleeding. I feel like Jasper Cullen is about to pop up in my window. And now I really want to learn how to play the sax. <laughs> That's such a flex. I'm still bleeding and I don't know what to do about it. I'm back in my van and I'm gonna do my makeup now and actually get ready. And the sun is about to set, so I barely have any light. Uh, I just genuinely don't feel like doing my makeup and getting ready. I don't feel like it. I just wanna go out there in this Jungkook t-shirt still and vibe, but I also do wanna look cute. I, I look cute right now, but it's like, you know, Okay, I'm gonna do my makeup now. I'll check in with you guys later. I have to clean the van. It's disgusting. Disgusting. Saw that thing so beautiful. Ta da! Ta da! Ta da! Ta da! Yeah, she got me like ta da! <laughs> okay, bye. So now I'm looking really cute, okay? I meet up with Ryan and he had this crazy hat on when I saw him. It was like a cowboy hat with fringe, but the fringe were beads. These colorful goggles on that just changed colors. Turn up. <laughs> Thank you.
<laughs> my stigmatism. That's what my stigmatism. This is a representation of my eyesight. <laughs> Dude, you look so dope. Get this. Wait, I'm this. fucking loving it. Uh, yeah. We don't Where know. Do we we just found it. Genuinely. Our friend just had this it. Drip gave right it to here. This, this chandelier. Yeah. Hey, this one's on. I didn't get to see Billie Eilish and don't kill me. I'm sorry Billie Eilish stands. I've seen Billie Eilish before at Life is Beautiful and it was fucking beautiful. She's so great live, but there was a party called Electric Carnival. Not me calling it Electric Carnival the entire video, but it's really Neon Carnival. <laughs> neon Carnival. Same thing, electric, neon, whatever. And it was taking place during Billy's set, and I really did want to see her, but I was like obligated to go to this party. I met up with Caitlin and Meg and Jake, and then I get a call from Christelle, and she says, hey, do you have the van key? And I was like, yeah, it's in my fanny. Not my butt, but like my fanny pack. She was like, do you think that before you go to Electric Carnival, you can go back to the campsite and put the key in between the couch cushions so I can go back to the campsite and get it and like make some food and like just open up the van and go to sleep tonight? And I'm like, yeah, of course, girly. Absolutely. Not thinking anything of it. I'm like, yes, of course. Me, Caitlin, Jake, and Meg all got on one of those colorful bikey things. And this man rode us all the way to my campsite. So once we got to the campsite, I get off the bike and I say, one second, I just have to drop the key in the couch. And they're all sitting in the bike and they're like, okay, girly. And so I run and I take my key. I slip it in the couch cushion. I take a picture. I send it to Christelle. I get back on the bike. And I'm like, everything's chill. Let's go to the electric carnival, whatever that means. I had no idea what electric carnival meant. The bike driver, dude, let's name him Jason. So Jason, the guy that's riding the bike, which I'm like, that is so crazy that they have that much leg power to ride a bike with four individuals on it. Four human beings that weigh over a hundred pounds. And they're doing this all day, every day, all weekend. What an incredible workout. He's like playing tunes on his bike. You know, they got like little speakers. It's a vibe. Electric Carnival is a pretty bougie event. It's not at Coachella. You have to get an Uber and drive off the premises. And it's like a pretty bougie event. Lots of influencers probably some celebrities I don't fucking know but you have to be invited to it you have to have like a certain wristband for it you know eh. oh you know I wasn't thinking then I look down at my feet and I realize that I'm still barefoot I don't have shoes on and that is not gonna fly that is not gonna fly at this party. This is a bougie ass party that you have to be on the list for and you need shoes. It's like no shirt, no shoes, no service type vibes. There are professionals here and I was invited to this and I'm obligated to show up and have shoes on and I didn't have shoes on. Wait, Sarah, so you so you didn't have shoes on? I didn't have shoes on. Could you maybe could you maybe say that one more time? I don't think I heard that. I didn't have shoes on. Those little bike ride things that we were on cost so much money. And I'm like, fuck, I have to make this guy turn around and we're gonna have to pay so much money. But I knew that I was not gonna be able to get into this party and that would cause like a whole other scene if I just mentioned that I didn't have my shoes right when we got into the party, you know? So I knew I had to rip the band-aid off and I'm like, guys. And then the bike driver was like, huh? Oh, I didn't get shoes. Oh, God, wait. Sir, sir. Sir, I'm so sorry. Could we go back? That was the one thing I needed. That was the one thing. Sarah forgot shoes. That was the one thing. I know, I'm sorry. Fuck it, Sarah. I'll tip you, dude. I'm sorry. That was the one thing that I needed. Rule no, number one, you cannot show up to the young shoes. Shoes. barefoot. No, because I was headbanging just now, and I saw your shoes. And, and you're like, where are mine? Mine are absent. Mine are absent. And then he whipped his shit around. He went back to the van. I hopped off of that wagon. I grabbed the keys from the couch opened up the van, slid that shit open so quickly, and grabbed the first shoes that were in my vision. Shut the van, locked it, 
put the keys right back in the couch. I go back on the bike and I'm like, okay, let's go. I'm so sorry. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I'm just holding onto my shoes, just like, uh huh. <laughs> you got your shoes now. <laughs> All right, ready? We're ready. I think. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to connect with the earth. Hey, thank you, Sarah. I got you, brother. Here's the campgrounds, right? Here's my van. Here's the entrance of Coachella, where we have to go to call the Uber. We're going, we're going. I have shoes now holding them, going through the campgrounds. Yeah, yeah. Here's the drop-off location. Yeah, right about here. My van's over here, right? Right about here. I'm like, oh shit, we're about to get off of this bike. Let me put my shoes on. I put my socks on, and then I put the first shoe on. It's not going on. This shoe is a size seven. I have wiener schnitzel feet, size 10, hot dogs for feet. They're large. And I got these puny little sevens that I'm trying to squeeze my wiener schnitzel feet into. And it's not working. It is not working. And I'm like, wow. I really just grabbed Christelle's fucking shoes because I have shoes that looked exactly like those. We're right about to get dropped off and I cannot tell them to turn all the way back around. It's gonna take like 10 minutes just to drop and that's gonna be like another $100, y'all. I'm not kidding. These bike rides are no joke money-wise. They're so expensive. I'm not gonna put everyone through this again. My heels were hanging on the back of those shoes all night. The back of the shoe was just bent. I will buy Christelle new shoes if I ruin these. But I'm just like, God damn it. It was just a very uncomfortable experience. I love dancing my pants off. And the fact that I had to worry about these shoes slipping off my feet every five seconds. I couldn't even like walk comfortably. I didn't even walk like a normal human. Was waddling almost. It just wasn't a natural flow of movement. Oh, it was just a nightmare. And they were also like very narrow too. And my feet are kind of wide. So it was just like squeezing. Oh my god. I had to push past the pain. I still had a great time and I looked really cute. I was busting it down as much as I could. There was definitely a pulse in my feet. I just kind of pulsated to the beat that rhymed. But I just had to ground myself and think about what's important, you know? Me being at this influencer party, me being on the list, that's what's important. No, but it was really fun. It was fun, it was fun. I was pretty drunk though. Don't remember a lot of it. I just remember doing the robot a lot on the dance floor. <laughs> So then after that little festi, while we were waiting for our Uber, I received a text. <laughs> this text is from Christelle, my sister, roommate, best friend, lover. And it's a paragraph and I'm drunk and my feet hurt, so tired and I'm just so ready to get into my van. And this paragraph says, Hi. I don't want you to freak out, but I lost the car key. I know exactly where I left it, but I checked and it was gone. I'm waiting to check lost and found. Just call me before you leave the neon carnival, and if I don't have the key, just stay with Caitlin for the night and I'll go back to lost and found in the morning. I know that someone picked it up and will turn it in. I'm so fucking sorry, dude. I cannot believe I lost it. I feel awful. So I'm like, bitch. Like I'm a very understanding and calm, cool, collected person, but I was freaking out 
Number one, what the fuck are we gonna do if you can't find the keys? Number two, I had to sign a waiver for this van saying that I wouldn't lose the keys under any circumstance. And if I did lose those keys, I would have to pay an incredibly huge fine, but I didn't want to lose those keys because I wanted to work with this company in the future and I wanted them to trust me, you know what I'm saying? And I already like developed a good relationship with them. Thank God she left the van unlocked so we could sleep in the van. She just doesn't know how we're gonna turn the van on. I was really upset. I thought that she would just hold on to those keys and like keep them safe. And I didn't really want to see her when I got back to the campsite because I was just so tired and I just didn't want to have to deal with this right now. I told Christelle, I was like, listen, you need to figure out how to get those keys back or how to get some new keys because like this is on you. I love you. But like, bruh, this van was so expensive. I'm too overwhelmed to, to like even think about this. So I'm gonna go sleep at Caitlin's. And she was like, oh my God, okay. Like, I'm so, she like kept apologizing and I'm like, it's cool. Just like, please figure it out. You know what I mean? I was being kind of like snappy with her that night just because I was drunk and tired and just like, are you kidding me? But I know that shit happens. I'm just like, how the fuck are we gonna get home? And how are we gonna call a locksmith out here at Coachella? What are we gonna do? I was just like, so like, dude. I get to Caitlin's house and they didn't have any extra beds in their hotel room. They had a lot of people. And so I slept on the floor. I made a little cot for myself. It was fine. I slept like a baby. I was just so tired. I just like needed to rest my head somewhere comfortable. And I didn't want to have to talk to Christelle about these keys. Then I woke up the next morning extremely hungover. You have a spot for next weekend. You, know? <laughs> like, you already set up, so. <laughs> I have a spot for next week. That is very true, mate. Um, hey guys. <laughs> I got my ass in the bass pro No! 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 Yeah! <laughs> I got my ass eaten at the best pro show. I have no idea what that means. My shirt. My shirt says, I got my ass eaten at the best pro show. Oh, it says that. <laughs> it actually says that. No, it's a real story. <laughs> it's not a true story. Hey That's guys, update. Life. Christelle lost the key, so... <laughs> I'm sleeping on the ground right now, but I'm not gonna worry about it, <laughs> you know? Like, how the fuck am I supposed to leave this goddamn festival? I don't know. But hopefully we have an answer. <laughs> Just got... <laughs> what was that interaction? <laughs> Look at me. <laughs> You're making me feel like a zoo animal. <laughs> did I just make a sale on Depop? You sure did. Yes! <laughs> Ding! <laughs> Best day ever. <laughs> I need to take a shower. Good morning. Okay, I will wait. Oh, wait, we have another person. <laughs> oh, Sarah. <laughs> this is Sarah. Can you talk some? Can you Hi. <laughs> I'm not well. <laughs> Did you sit in the den? Daddy? Huh? Did you used to go to the den? I yeah. slept on the floor. No, no, no. Did you used to go to the den meditation? Oh, oh my god! Oh my god, oh my god. you're the receptionist. Oh my god, you go out. You're the receptionist of the den. Do you still work there? No, no, no. Wait, you guys. She she used to work at the meditation place I used to go to. Oh, what the fuck? She was the receptionist. <laughs> she checked me in every single week. <laughs> you guys know each other. And I know. I was like, wait a second. <laughs> what the fuck? No fucking way. God, we need a meditation right now. I would love Can you guide us through a meditation right now? Oh my god. I'm so good. I mean. I'm just they know each other. That's so iconic. Oh my god. Oh my god. I thought she literally asked me, Are you sleeping in the den? And I'm like, I was sleeping on the floor. And she's like, No, did you go to the den meditation center? 
<laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> no, I'm yeah. sleeping on the floor, <laughs> not the desk. <laughs> I just can't get over the setup. Like, it looks like hot. It was great. I slept like a baby. So then, Caitlin, Meg, and Jake were starting to get ready for day three. They had another party that they had to go to. They were obligated to go to, and they had to do a bunch of like influencer shit. And so I woke up and I'm like, I need to go back to the campsite and face this reality. And I get into the Uber. And like I said, y'all, camping at Coachella is the vibe because that walk that you have to do just to get to the entrance is brutal. It is brutal, bitch. I don't know how many miles it was. I was still in Christelle's small ass shoes, dude. Those were the only shoes that I had. And halfway through my walk, I just took those shoes off and I'm like, I'm just walking. And it was dirt. I was just walking through the dirt and the mud just in my socks because I'm like, dude, these shoes are excruciating pain. People were looking at me and like, ooh, she's in her socks. But I'm like, you're in your platform stilettos. Are you okay? Are you okay? Because it seems like you want to take your shoes off too. Let's all just take our shoes off. But I'm just like, I'm doing this. You know, ow, 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 blisters, blisters. Ow, 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 ow. Oh my God, I've been walking for 15 minutes. Ow, ow. Okay, shoes are off now. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. Okay, I'm barefoot. Everyone's looking at me. Don't care. I'm in my socks. I feel better about myself, but I still got like 30 minutes to walk. Like it was crazy. And then some of my friends are like, well, we just like take the bikes. And I'm like, oh, so you're spending like $400 every day just to get to and fro, not including the Uber. Dude, I'm just like, y'all are spending so much money, man. I don't know. But I finally got back to my campsite. I opened up the van and Christelle was in the van and she was laying there and she just felt so bad. She was just apologizing. And I was like, dude, it's fine. And I just wanted to like lay there and take a nap so apologetic and like I couldn't be mad like I was mad at her the night before but seeing her and like see how upset she was and like how much she felt bad like I'm like I can't be mad at you like it was a mistake I've definitely been there before where I've lost my shit being drunk then we started getting ready for day three and as we were getting ready we kind of like talked about it a little bit so I mean I guess since this was my fault <laughs> <laughs> it is absolutely my fault. I got too drunk. <laughs> Basically, I came back to the campsite. I asked Sarah to leave the key for me so I could get stuff, like a change of clothes as it was getting cold and whatever. So I came back to the campsite by myself. I slammed a bunch of shots because I was sober. <laughs> I um, made it back to the festival, whatever, having a great old time. And I ended up like meeting up with these um, three like random people because people weren't texting me back because the service was really bad. So I meet up with these three random, well, didn't meet up with them. I walk up to them and I'm like, I'm sitting with you guys because I don't want to be alone because I'm like a girl, you know, and it's scary. Um, <laughs> and then they're like, yeah, totally, we're vibing. And I thought that I lost the key when I was with them and I was like, oh my God, this is awful. And then the, I was like, oh right, I didn't put my key in the pocket of my sweater. I put it in my pants because I was wearing like spandex. So like it felt safer there. I ended up finding them in my pants and I was like super relieved and I sat back down with them and I was like, LOL, how silly of me. I thought I lost the key. And also before I left the campsite, I was thinking about leaving the key where Sarah left it for me just because I didn't want to risk losing it. But I didn't want to like also have Sarah be upset that I left the key the whole night which would be like fair. So I was just like, I'll just take it, whatever. And then I, after everyone texts me back, they're like, oh, we're meeting at the Doe Lab, whatever, like meet us there. I tell the people that I was with, I was like, okay, like I'm meeting up with my friends now. Thank you, you guys are cool. Um, and we like exchange Instagrams. I walk away. Mind you, I'm fucked up. I'm so, like I couldn't see. I was blind. I was so drunk. Like literally like cross-eyed, I, it just, I did not have to drink that much, <laughs> but I was like scared. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I get it. Yeah, totally. It's so, just an anxiety thing too. Yeah, where I'm like, I like, I'd rather be too drunk than too sober <laughs> at Coachella. Yeah. I'm walking away, and I'm like, damn, I need to pee immediately. 
so I go up to these trash can, this trash can, but it's like not like the cheap like cardboard trash cans. It was like the wooden like recycling trash and like whatever the third one would be. I don't know. <laughs> there, but it was three like compartments and it was a huge fat wooden like trash unit so i like just stand next to it and then i put my hoodie over my legs to make it look like i was just like squatting and i like take my pants off and i pee i walk away and like 30 minutes later i realize i lost the fucking key uh turns out i probably pissed on the keys and walked away like literally literally i met up with um everyone at the doe lab i realized that i left the key and i was like i have to go like i need to i need to yeah. find these keys because in your head you're like we're fucked yeah i'm like we don't have a place to sleep if i don't find these keys yeah and i thought that i locked the door so i'm really glad that i didn't i'm walking around from 9 45 until the end of coachella literally on my hands and knees scouring the place for these fucking keys bro literally looking everywhere like and a dog literally like a dog i checked my amount of steps <laughs> that i took yesterday almost eleven thousand <laughs> steps Holy like shit. or it was it twenty one thousand? i don't remember <laughs> that's a very big difference but can you guys tell when i lost the keys <laughs> oh <my laughs> like, do you, can you like see that <laughs> Holy like, shit. You can tell right when it happened. Like I was like, I'm not even gonna say anything. I hope I find them before. <laughs> yeah, I noticed. And then that. I was just like, when once I like left, I was like, it's over. So you're like, I don't want Sarah to freak out. Yeah, because I knew that you would be like, what the fuck? <laughs> I mean, you literally said, bro, what the fuck? <laughs> I did. And then you're like, I can't deal with this right now. I'm sleeping at Caitlyn's, and I was like, damn, bitch. Well, I just couldn't. Like. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> <laughs> I was so annoyed. I was like, bitch, how are we going to get home? I know. And we have to leave tomorrow. Yeah. Let's um, just stay until next weekend. Yeah. <laughs> we already have a place. We have a place for stagecoach, too. <laughs> I accidentally body slammed a bitch yesterday. Like, I tackled someone on accident. It, it wasn't my fault. Right. One of, I think, Matt's friends stepped on my fringe. And because he stepped on it, I fell forward. Oh, no. Like the impact was so hard because everyone was walking really fast uh -huh. to the next set. And so we were like speed walking. He steps on my fringe. I fall over and there was this girl just sitting on the lawn by herself. I think she was coming up on a drug. Oh my God. <laughs> because she was like sitting on the lawn, like scared, like kind of freaking out. Mm -hmm. And I body slammed her and her head hit the ground so hard and it looked like she was like coming up on drugs and I just smack her and she falls over, hits her head back on the ground so hard. Like I genuinely was like, oh, oh my God. And I like sat with her and I was like massaging her head. I'm like, I am so sorry. And she was like, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. But I could just oh tell gosh. she was rolling tits. Oh my god. <laughs> and I was like, are you sure? Like, I have some Excedrin. Do you need any? And she was like, no, it's okay. I'm, I'm fine. And I was like, oh my god, if this bitch just got a concussion because of me. Oh, that's so humiliating. It's so humiliating. So then after we squashed the beef, <laughs> there was like a little bit of beef because I'm just like, dude, the one thing that you cannot lose is the key. And then she lost the key. So I'm like, yeah, there's some beef, bitch. But we squashed the beef, whatever. And then we realized we hadn't seen one show together. Not one. We both love Doja Cat. We were like, let's go to Doja Cat together. We're gonna figure out the van thing tomorrow when we have to leave, okay? Let's just have a good night. I did not want Christelle to be like in her head all day, day three, thinking about like where this key was. Let's just not let this ruin our experience. At least you kept the van unlocked. Thank God. We squash the beef, we're on good terms, we're vibing. We go to the Heineken bar, we get some brewskis before we see Doja Cat. <laughs> Happy Easter! Happy Easter! Jesus! Jesus! <laughs> Jesus <laughs> risen <laughs> from the dead. Thank you, Jesus! Jesus slayed on Jesus Easter! Jesus slayed on Easter! <laughs> <laughs> Jesus slayed. He did that. <laughs> Jesus did that. Jesus rose up from the, the dead. dead. Like Jesus rose from the dead. Jesus Cristo <laughs> raised from the dead. Once he raises from the dead, it pans over to us. Slay! Slay! Jesus. <laughs> okay, so we're at the Heineken 
clowns, I guess. Cheers, bitch. We need to chuck this immediately. Like, we need to leave. Doja Cat's literally coming on right now. If she continued, but I think that that's what the issue is. It's like she it's knows stressful that for her. she knows that she could literally be a legend. She already is a legend. That was like it phenomenal. was it was genuinely that was my favorite set of the entire Coachella experience. And listen, we love Harry. We but love Harry. Harry's our brother. Well, I mean, Harry played a lot of slow. So it was like Harry was more like sentimental, but for Doja, it was just like lit. My jaw was on the floor. As like a pop artist, like that was everything. Like yeah. she hit every anything that I have on a checklist for a pop artist. Hit it. She hit it, and then like continued checking off shit that I didn't even know I had on my list. And she was doing crazy choreo. She was flipping around. She went upside down. Yeah. And flipped well, around. When she flipped, Sarah was like, "Imagine if Harry did that," and I started laughing. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> "Harry doing a flip?" I would literally start crying laughing. But also, we just cannot compare the two. Oh, wait, Nora's calling me. Okay, but yeah, all right. We just wanted to hello let you guys know how we felt about the Doja Where are set. You? It was absolutely breathtaking, show stopping. We love Doja Cat. Uh, we are stan. Wait, can you like? Uh, I'm trying to meet my friends. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. I'm talking um, to them. Can we meet somewhere a little bit more prominent? Than She's that? trying to find her friend. We're about to go see the weekend. Um, I'm gonna meet um, up with my friend. She's gonna meet up wait, with her okay. friends. And this is Would the thing. Like I love Christelle and me because me and her have so many different friend groups. And Christelle and I can be like, hey, okay, you're gonna go do your thing. I'm gonna go do my thing. Love you. Like, you know what I'm saying? We just, not being like, oh, we're just like so popular. Oh my God. We just have so many friends, but it's just like, we just have so many different sure, friend I groups. Know. I just like need to meet you guys on the rail somewhere. Because <laughs> I'm gonna be alone. Like, and I refuse to be alone tonight because I'm No, alone. you're not gonna, I'm not gonna let that happen. So we're gonna go figure out where her friends are at. And then I'm gonna go see The weekend. I'm so excited. I'm so excited like, to see I The weekend, y'all. You have no that. idea. So I go to VIP. I meet up with Caitlyn, Meg, and Jake. We get lit for the weekend. I'm a motherfucker star boy. Oh my God, he played often, often. God, I do this often. And I do it 
Like he played all of his old, not all of his old shit, but a lot of his old shit. And it was so iconic. I was busting it down, dude. He played a lot of songs from Starboy. Are you <laughs> the one thing I will say though, is I was waiting for gasoline to play. It's 5 a.m. my time again. No, 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 no. It's 5 a.m. my time again. Like that song makes me laugh out loud. It's so funny and like creative. The way he's singing the song is just so artistic. I don't know. It's 5 a.m. my time again. Like that's not how he sings. It's just so funny and perfect. Like I'm just waiting for it. And he didn't play that song. Whatever. He did play I Feel It Coming with Daft Punk. Daft Punk was not there, but he did play that song. I feel it coming, baby. That's one of my favorite songs ever. I feel it coming. Hey. You don't even know the night. Baby, it's a perfect time. I just want to feel you right. Even in your name. You don't have to rush it, but it means you. Just a simple touch, I know what you've do. Just a simple touch, and it can set you free. So that song was iconic live. I was busting it down, bitch. I was so happy. After the weekend, Coachella's over. It's over. And I haven't seen Will, my ex. And we were texting all weekend, like trying to figure out how to meet up, but it just never happened. I texted him after the weekend and I was like, yo, like, do you want to meet at my campsite or at your campsite? Like, I do want to say hi to you before we leave tomorrow. And he was like, oh my God, come to my campsite. We're all going to go to the silent disco. And I was like, okay, bet. I meet up with Christelle again at our campsite. And I'm like, do you want to go say hi to Will? And she was like, yes, of course. We brought one of our wine bags. I was a little nervous, you know? I was just like, oh my god, I haven't seen him in a year. I don't even know who he's here with. Is he here alone? Like, what is his vibe? So I call him, I'm like, yo, I'm like in front of the silent disco. And then I just see him standing there with the phone. And he's like looking around. I'm like, oh shit, here we go. We give each other a big hug. And he was like, come and meet everybody. I was like, who are you here with? And he's like, oh, I'm here with like 20 people. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, you're, okay, I'm just about to, let me just put on my extrovert suit <laughs> and see 20 of your friends. Like, what are you talking about? You're here with 20 people. And he was like, honestly, one of my friends from college just hit me up and said that she had an extra ticket. I don't even know any of these people. I just know my one friend. So Christelle and I walk up to 20 random people that are Will's new friends. I don't know what to say. So the first thing that comes out of my mouth was, what's up y'all? I'm Will's ex. And everyone starts laughing and they're like, what? And I'm like, yeah, but it's cool. <laughs> We're like friends. And everyone's like, okay, what? And I forgot to mention this, but Christelle popped out from behind me and she was like, what's up? <laughs> I'm Will's ex's roommate. And everyone was just sitting around and everyone was so high. Like, I don't even know <laughs> like what type of substance they were on, but they were just like, okay. Like, is this a good thing? <laughs> what? Nice to meet you, question mark. It was so funny. Christelle and I were just vibing. We gave them the wine bag. We were all slapping it and shit. It was just so random. I was like, why am I at my ex's campsite with all these random people slapping a wine bag? I, it was like such an out of body experience for me, but it was also like so fine. Like it wasn't even weird at all. Christelle went back and met up with her friends at this other campsite. And then I went to the silent disco with Will and all of his 20 friends. And then Will decided that he wanted to take the wine bag into the silent disco but we can't just bring that in duh there's a security guard right there and he was like just just wait he takes the wine bag and he shoves it in his pants and I don't know how he just smoothly stuck it in his pants so casually. It didn't even take him any time. It was just like a few seconds. He just did it, put his shirt over it, and he looked normal. I was like, 
Yeah, that's my ex. <laughs> yep, that's William. And it worked. Walked right through security, very chill. Everyone was coming up to us asking to slap the bag. There was like a line. Like people were just trying to come up to us and slap the bag and get some of that wine. And we did warn everybody that that wine bag was just in his pants, but no one gave a shit. They are like, we don't care, I'm gonna slap the bag. And we're like, you sure? And they're like, just give me the bag. So we did warn people. Yeah! I'm so bad. This way. I'm the most British person. <laughs> Londoners. <laughs> I got it, I got it, I got it, okay. Yes! There we go. <laughs> <laughs> we were popping that night. We felt like celebrities. We were like, yes. Because everyone was coming out to us like, how did you get the wine in here? Just stuff it in your pants. That's all it takes. And I didn't include this because I didn't know if I wanted to, but I think it's funny now. But it was so platonic that entire time at the silent disco. We weren't even dancing on each other. We were just like besties, like eh, you know what I'm saying? It just felt so bestie vibes. We did finish that wine bag and wine, you know? And I just remember us <laughs> going back to his campsite with everybody. And I just remember saying out loud to him when we got back to his campsite, you wanna give me a tent tour? And we like tried to make out, <laughs> like we tried to. <laughs> and then I think we both were kind of like, what are we, what, no. And then he was like, I need to go to sleep. I'm so tired. And I was like, yeah, what am I doing? Like we both kind of like snapped out of it and we're like, wait, no, no, <laughs> like no. And I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back to my van. Cause like, I, I can't, I can't. And he was like, yeah, no, like we can't. And I was like, no, uh, that's a mess. Like I don't want to be involved in a mess. But then the next morning it was funny. We were like texting and like laughing about it. We were just like, what the fuck? I'm glad that we both kind of mutually were like, it ends here. So just wanted to include that. I eventually went back to the van. I fell asleep. Christelle was asleep already. And then we woke up. I have never been that hungover in my life, y'all. Wine fucks you up. And we were drinking wine all night. Wine hangovers are brutal. If you know, you know. I just remember waking up that next morning. I was so nauseous. I was so dizzy. I felt like if I opened my eyes and made one movement, I would puke everywhere, all over the van. I was just laying there, but I could hear what was going on. I could hear Christelle outside of the van, like talking on the phone with someone in a panic. She was like, okay, okay, thank you, I'll figure it out. And I'm like, oh my God. And she just keeps calling people and having like the same conversation. I think she was just calling like multiple locksmiths. I just remember laying there and then hearing this voice and it was someone there that came up to Christelle and it was like a very aggressive voice. You guys need to get out of here. You guys need to take the campsite down. You guys need to get out of here right now. Just so angry. And Christelle was like, I'm sorry. I lost the key to the van. I'm trying to get a locksmith. She was like panicking. And I was laying there and I was listening to this and all I wanted to do was get up and like be present and help her. But I just felt like I was going to yak if I opened my eyes. And then in my head, I was like, Christelle's gonna handle this. Like she's the one that lost the key. Like she needs to figure this out. The the voice was, I am pretty sure it was just a security guard. And they were just like, well, you need to figure it out right now because blah, 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 blah. Being so mean, Christelle was obviously stressed out. And she's like, I'm trying my best. And I was like, oh my God, I really need to get up and help her, but I, I don't know how to get up. 
without throwing up right now. And I could like feel my head and it was like pulsating. And I was like, oh my God, dude, this is like, why did I drink so much wine last night? That was like a terrible move on my part. Maybe like 30 minutes later, I heard two other voices. And at Coachella, there are police officers riding on horses. That's the vibe for them. Like all the police officers and security guards, they're all on horses. So I heard like, <laughs> rolling up to our van and I'm like, what the fuck are those horses? And then I heard a voice being like, you need to take down your campsite right now and you need to pack up all your shit. She was like, I'm just trying to find a locksmith to come get us a key. Like I'm just doing the best that I can. The police officer was like, are you alone? Are you by yourself? And Christelle was like, no, my, my friend is in the van. She's just super hungover. And the police officer said something like, you need to wake her up and she needs to take down this campsite. She's not being a really good friend, huh? The police officer is roasting me, calling me a shitty friend. And I was like, oh my God, fuck, fuck, fuck. The police officer was like, your friend needs to wake up right now. This is unacceptable. You guys are the last ones on this lot. And then that's when I was kind of like, oh my God, are we really the last ones on this lot? Like, I didn't even know what time it was. I didn't know where I was. I didn't know like who I was. I was just, all I knew is that I was going to puke. And I like forced my eyes to open and I was so dizzy. And I was like, oh my God, how the fuck? am I gonna do this right now? And I like look out the window and I see these police officers on their stupid little horse. Not, the horses weren't stupid. Christelle's on the verge of tears and I have to step my shit up, be a human somehow. And I look around us and there's no other cars. Like everyone packed up their shit already and left. Like we were dead ass the last people in that field. And I had no idea. Like I like slept through the whole thing. The police officer gets off of her horse and she slides the van open. And I'm laying there in the back of the van like and I just opened my eyes. I am vulnerable. I feel like a newborn baby. Just like what the fuck is going on? And I'm looking at her and it's so like dizzy and it's like not focused and she's like, you need to get up and help your friend. Take the campsite down. because You guys need to leave. And you need to be a good friend and help her. Help her. And I was like, okay, oh my God. All right, all right, okay, give me a sec. Oh my God, okay, all right. And she was just like yelling at me and yelling at Christelle. And Christelle's already overwhelmed just trying to get a locksmith over here. The police officer horses bitches left, but then they would come back every 10 minutes. Why aren't you guys gone? Where's the locksmith? And we're like, we're working on it. Oh my God. I help her take the canopy down, put it in the car, take the table. I fold the table up. I put it in the car, trash, whatever. I put it in the car. And then I like feel like I'm I'm going to puke. And I'm like, dude, if I don't lay down, I'm, I'm literally gonna yak everywhere. And after everything was clear, I went back into the car and I'm just laying down, closing my eyes. Cause she's still trying to call locksmith people. So I don't really know how to help her anymore. So I'm just like letting Christelle handle it. Cause she's the one that locked lost the keys and I'm gonna puke. Finally, a locksmith comes and makes us a key. And apparently it's a way better key than our original key. It was an automatic beep, beep, beep key. I guess just so much better quality than the last one. Thank God for that man. He was such a sweet angel. I was so blessed. The key did cost $300 for him to make, but she did pay me back for that because I had to pay for it in that moment. And I was kind of annoyed, but I'm like, she'll pay me back. And she did. agreement was I drove to Coachella and she was gonna drive back to LA and I could tell that she was just really like annoyed about me not helping her that morning but also just annoyed at herself for losing the key in the first place and that we were even in that situation like she was just so just like not 
in a good mood at all. I'm like laying in the back, like still like so sick. We stopped to get food and we were like in a drive through and I was like, dude, I will drive home. You've been so stressed over this damn key all morning and all day yesterday and the whole second half of the second night. If you wanna sleep in the back, like I can drive. And she was like, you know what? Yeah, okay. Like I do need to like lay down. I'm like very overwhelmed. And I'm like, okay, yeah. And so then I just drove all the way home and that was what really helped us heal in a way like squashed that she slept the entire way home in the back seat it was like a four or five hour drive and i was just driving and i was very hungover felt very sick like i was gonna puke the whole time but i just played my music and i was just trying to like focus on the road i drove home for us we didn't want to unpack the van right when we got home we were so exhausted and so tired so we unpacked the van the next night <laughs> And the only way that we could get ourselves to do that was to like sip on some claws and like listen to music in the van while unpacking it. Just cause there was so much shit in the van y'all and it was such a mess. Like we are messy bitches. Oh my God. And like the only way that we could get ourselves to do that was drink claws, which is so sad. It's not sad, but it's just like we were having fun, you know, getting lit while like unpacking the van. It made it fun, okay? And then we went to bed that night. The next morning I took the van back to Inglewood. I drove it all the way back to Inglewood. But yeah, that was my Coachella experience. It wasn't as crazy as the last one, but it was still really fun, very chaotic, very stressful this time around. A little bit of drama. You know what? It happens. Life happens. And I'm still really grateful that I got to go. I'm just grateful for everything. And I'm grateful for you guys for even caring about my Coachella experience. You guys hound me every day about how it was and I hope that you guys are satisfied with this. I love you guys so much. I'll see you soon.